Hey, Warpugs. Today we're going to get to something that you guys have wanted me to check out for some time now. And judging by the amount of votes, a lot of you want me to see it. This is Exploring the SCP Foundation, SCP-3515, Unearth. I know about Unlondon, Undublin. Is this something else entirely? Uh, RIDA put in for this. And the note that was left said, This SCP terrified me for a long time, and I'm happy to share it with you so you can feel the same. Thank you. All right, let's get into it. Guys, leave a like and a comment down below. We're going to jump into this. Exploring series link's going to be in the description down below as well as my own. Here we go. 515. Unearth. Claustrophobia is a common enough fear, as plenty of people are uncomfortable or uneasy with tight spaces, especially when it comes to caves or other underground areas. Being buried alive, however, is an even more common fear, even mm -hmm. among those who aren't normally claustrophobic. Under the earth, with no room to move and no air to breathe, left only with your own thoughts as you inch closer to the inevitability of death, is an understandable enough fear. Yeah. SCP-3515 is, in a sense, about the prospect of being buried alive, but somehow it ends up being even worse than that. SCP-3515 is a charcoal drawing on paper, currently fitted in a wooden frame. Okay. The drawing depicts a barren landscape with a large knotted willow tree in the foreground at the crest of a hill of bare earth. Okay. The artist and date of creation are unknown. Spending more than an hour close to the drawing causes an individual to experience low-volume auditory hallucinations. Great. Described as the sound of slow, steady digging. Subjects have most commonly matched these sounds to that of manual digging with a metal shovel in heavy clay soil. If an affected okay. individual leaves the close proximity of the drawing, the hallucinations cease. If However, an individual sleeps while in proximity to the drawing, they will spontaneously dematerialize, along with their clothing and anything else attached to them. So, what is the classification of this? Is it safe? Is it Keter? Is it Euclid? I, at this point, would think it would be safe because it's a drawing. You would be able to contain it rather easily and as long as you weren't stupid around it you wouldn't get yanked to test this out a d-class was fitted with a gps tracking device a head mounted camera and microphone and a transmitter and was told to sleep near the drawing okay the d-class asks what exactly they're testing for but the researcher says that he can't tell him that the D-Class lies down and begins to fall asleep. Nighty-night. After 20 minutes of sleep, he dematerializes, and the signals from his equipment continue to be received. The view from his camera changes to what appears to be another room, and it seems that the D-Class is still asleep. Okay. The GPS signal shows his location to be a suburban house, so the closest MTF is sent in to investigate. The house shows signs of recent habitation, but the current residents are absent. Footage from one of the upstairs bedrooms resembles the room shown on the D-Class's camera feed, but the D-Class is not present. Oh. After three hours, with nothing changing, the researcher wakes up the D-Class by talking into his earpiece. The D-Class wakes up a little groggy, but otherwise fine, and looks around to show a typical bedroom with a bookcase and desk. The room's dimensions and paint color match what the MTF saw, but the furnishings are different, and the MTF are not visible. The D-Class recognizes the location, however, claiming that it's his childhood bedroom in his parents' house. Oh! He says that there's no one there with him, and asks how he got here. The researcher tells him that they're hoping he can help figure that out. 
The D-Class exits the bedroom and walks along a hallway, calling out to see if anyone else is there. There's no response, as he heads downstairs and looks at some photographs framed on the wall. He remarks on even the photographs being the same, and it's noted that the photos are consistent with known information about his family, as well as the GPS location matching his childhood residence. Oh boy. He calls out to his family, but they're not there, and in fact, the current owners of the property are not related to the D-Class at all. They are temporarily detained by the Foundation and later amnesticized. The D-Class remarks that everything is just as it was when he was growing up, pointing out that he fell off that sofa when he was seven, spraining his wrist. There's one painting on the wall, however, that he doesn't remember, uh -huh. resembling SCP-3515. He doesn't know if there was a different picture in its place growing up, but he knows that he's never seen this picture before today. He approaches it closer, and although it doesn't look any different from before, he remarks that the digging sound seems to be a bit louder now. Yay! He proceeds to pull open the curtains on a window, but the window is obscured, as if it was covered in mud. He then goes to the front door and mm. unlocks it, but it's stuck in place and he cannot open it. He applies more force, and suddenly the door pops open, causing him to fall to the ground. He begins to swear as he looks out the doorway, and the camera footage shows that the doorway is filled with dark soil, some of it spilling into the house. He moves towards it and begins pulling at the dirt, with clumps of it falling to the floor and more dirt falling into the gaps from above. He moves rapidly through the rest of the home, opening curtains and windows, showing that the entire house seems to be surrounded by earth. He begins to panic and swear more, eventually taking a wooden chair and throwing it at a window, causing it to break and earth to spill in. He sits down and breathes heavily, cursing the Foundation for burying him. Yeah. Shortly afterward, he removed his camera and headset, moving around the house for several hours. Eventually, he put the equipment back on, telling the researcher to shut up and get him out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's looked everywhere he can, and the whole place is covered in dirt. He's trying to stay calm, but they have to get him out. Buddy, you're done. You're d class They don't care about you. He's eaten a little, as there's some stuff in the kitchen, and the taps still run, but he hasn't slept yet. He asks the researcher how long he has until he runs out of air, but the researcher says that since the house is pretty large, he probably has enough for weeks. Doubt. He tells the D-Class to get some sleep, and they'll come up with a new plan to get him out tomorrow. I wouldn't. The D-Class doesn't want to sleep here, but no the shit. researcher suggests that it might cause the effect that brought him here to reverse. The D-Class gives it a try, but after several hours of sleep, nothing changes. The following day, the team guided the D-Class through the house to confirm that it was fully surrounded by soil, with various samples collected. All of the communication devices in the house were also tested, such as the phone and computer, but none of it was connected. They eventually... So I can't even play League? I'm done. ...initially settled on having the D-Class tunnel upwards from the house using a garden shovel from the basement. After spending the rest of the day gathering supplies from the house and setting up a makeshift ventilation system, the D-Class commenced digging the following day. The researcher guides him through the process as he starts the tunnel at an attic window, tossing the dirt down the stairs. The angle is awkward, but doing it this way gives an arch shape to the tunnel that will be more stable. Okay. He makes slow but steady progress, his attitude fluctuating between anger, withdrawal, and a strong desire for conversation. He finishes the day by watching the television for a few hours, which showed only pre-recorded programs, and then slept. On the second day, the tunnel has progressed to the point where he suddenly strikes something hard while digging. Oh. 
He begins pulling at the dirt with his hands, revealing a white shape. More digging reveals it to be a long bone. The researcher says that bones can be expected when digging underground, uh -huh. but the D-Class responds that it's not right because he's been digging for two days now and he hasn't found a single living thing. No worms, no bugs, no moles, nothing. So why is there a bone? Oh... This is just not... Mm. The researcher calms him down and tells him to take a closer look at it. He pulls more dirt away, revealing the bones of a human foot, causing him to swear and scramble back into the house. He abandons his headset for some time, and after two hours, he moves back into the tunnel with the shovel, still without his headset. 45 minutes later, he comes back and picks it up, telling the researcher that he'll show him something. Oh! Back in the tunnel, he reveals that he had dug a separate branch, and two more bones are visible, appearing similar to a human radius and ulna. He then uses his shovel to move some more dirt, revealing a series of smaller human bones. He asks the researcher what the hell is going on here, but the researcher can't answer, telling him that they're doing their best. This only serves to further anger the D-Class, yeah. who begins wildly digging and revealing more human bones, partially decomposed. There's a sound of dry retching, and he retreats from the tunnel, breathing hard for several minutes. He softly begs the researcher to do more to help. There's no help coming, bro. They're just watching you like a guinea pig at this point. You're a D-Class. You should be expecting this. And the researcher responds that they have his GPS signal, and they're going to have a team start digging down towards him. Uh-huh. In the meantime, he needs to keep digging upwards, as they can use his camera footage to see how close they are to finding him. Really? The D-Class isn't going to dig anymore today, however, and spends the rest of the day eating and sitting near the television. Early the following morning, as he begins to climb into the tunnel, the lights in the house lose power. He panics again, but rather than going back down to the living room, he insists that he's getting out of this house. Mm -hmm. He begins digging rapidly, rarely speaking to the researcher. On several occasions, he unearths bones or decomposing human remains, uh. but he either covers them in loose dirt or ignores them completely. The team monitoring the situation estimates that the remains comprise at least 12 individuals so far. Oh my god. After several hours of this, he strikes something hard again with his shovel. The researcher insists that he uncover it, as it may be something they can use to help get him out. Really? He digs it out, revealing it to be a decomposing human torso with several exposed ribs, along with a head with some flesh and hair remaining. The D-Class complains of the stench and asks how could this possibly help, with the researcher explaining that perhaps they can work out how they were buried and how close he is to the surface. Okay. He asks the D-Class to pick up the head, but he doesn't want to, swearing at the researcher and smashing the bones with his shovel. He then continues to dig erratically, increasing the incline of the tunnel. At one point, he exposes the bones of an arm, but only hacks at it with a shovel and covers it with earth as he continues to dig. After several hours, the shovel again strikes something hard, and after further digging, it's revealed to be a long tree root. Hey! He then stops digging and stares at it, with the researcher remarking that it's a good sign. It is a good this sign. This means he's getting near to the surface. Hey, yay! You're going good! Uh, now things get depressing again. And if he gets a bit closer, they can work out how near. The D-Class, however, only whispers that he doesn't like it, and it's not right. The researcher contacts the digging team, who tell him that they've dug 20 meters down and haven't found any human remains, 
and there's also no large trees in the vicinity of the house. Yay. The D-Class continues to dig for several more hours without food or water, exposing several more tree roots and bones. He continues, avoiding all contact with the tree roots, and after 14 hours of activity, the researcher tries to get him to stop for rest and food. The D-Class, however, only insists that he needs to get out, and he doesn't want to sleep. Yep. He does take a break, however, and admits that he's pretty tired. I bet the you are. The researcher makes some small talk with him, asking what meal he'd like when he gets back. He says that he'd like a burger with cheese from McDonald's, and the researcher says that they can arrange that. Yeah. He returns to the tunnel entrance for some food and water, but doesn't want to go back downstairs to sleep. Don't blame you. He's been down here for four days now, and he apologizes to the researcher for yelling at him. He then says that he's been thinking about the tree, the one from the picture, uh -huh. and he thinks that the tree hates him. He mentions the noise that he can hear constantly, and the researcher suggests that maybe he's hearing the digging team from above. Negative. He says, maybe, and then falls asleep for a few hours before waking with a start. The researcher says that he could go back to sleep if he wants, but he insists that he's getting out, taking his lantern and shovel go. and resuming to dig. Keep fighting. After a while, he complains about the stench again mm -hmm. and asks why there's so many bodies. The researcher suggests that perhaps he's below a graveyard and it would be a good sign as the surface would be close. No. Nope. This just causes the D-Class to laugh and it's clear that he's beginning to lose his grip on his sanity. I would not he blame him. He continues to dig, dumping more and more body parts behind him as he goes on until he's interrupted by a sudden heavy noise and his lantern goes out. He reveals to the researcher that the tunnel behind him just collapsed, burying the lantern and blocking oh, his way no. back. He begins to panic again, but the researcher tells him that he can do this. He just has to dig his way back to the house as there isn't enough air for him now. The D-Class exclaims that he can't go back and begins to cry for the researcher to help him. He eventually begins to... One thing I love about SCP, flat out, absolutely flat out, even when somebody has not done anything stupid, they're still screwed. This D-Class is terminally screwed. ...to shovel some of the soil from the collapsed tunnel causing more earth to fall from above, along with a human leg in the early stages of decomposition, clothed in gray rags. He retches, but continues to dig, forming a low hole with dirt continuing to fall from the ceiling of the remaining tunnel. The researcher urges him onward, but there's another loud noise, with the camera revealing that more of the tunnel roof has collapsed, reducing the remaining tunnel to a few meters in length. Uh, the camera then turns abruptly upwards, and the D-Class gasps. When the tunnel roof had fallen in, a series of thin tree roots had been exposed. Above them, there is no dirt, with the roots instead extending upwards into empty blackness as far as his headlamp's light can reach. The D-Class whimpers, drops his shovel, and scrambles into the low hole that he dug in the collapsed section, crawling forward. He ignores all attempts by the monitoring team to communicate with him, uh -huh. and continues digging forward slowly with his bare hands. His camera view shows dirt on all sides, and the microphone records rapid breathing. He continues forward for approximately 30 minutes his hands appearing to be bleeding in several oh, places, God. with the hole he's in remaining narrow and low. Suddenly, he jerks to a stop and exclaims that something's got his foot. The hole is too cramped for him to turn to look, but he continues to scream that something has grabbed him. The camera moves wildly, but nothing can be seen on his foot, and he continues to hyperventilate. 
He cries that he has to get out and begins to claw at the roof of the hole, attempting to dig directly upwards as dirt falls onto the camera. The researcher tries to calm him down, you ain't calling telling him, him down. that he has to go forward or he'll run out of air, but the D-Class ignores him and continues to dig upwards. Soon, he reveals some gray fabric, and as more earth falls, it reveals a human torso covered in a gray jumpsuit. Ugh. The D-Class says that it's him. Those are his clothes. Yeah. And they are all him. He then screams and scratches at the body's clothing, revealing a partially obscured number on the chest of the jumpsuit. He continues to claw frantically at the sides and roof of the hole, exposing the head of the corpse. The corpse's face appears to resemble the D-Class's, causing him to continue to scream. Oh, no. Well, you can't get off Mr. Bone's wild ride. I'm just saying, bro. He attempts to roll over to face away from the body, but there's a loud noise, and the corpse falls on top of him, oh! along with a large volume of earth. When the camera refocuses, the head of the corpse is directly in front of the lens, with packed soil visible above it. The researcher asks if he can hear him and can move, but he only responds with rapid, shallow breathing and whimpering, causing the researcher to simply apologize to him. After approximately 30 minutes, he begins to make noises consistent with suffering convulsions due to excessive carbon dioxide in the bloodstream. Damn. After a further eight minutes, no further sounds are audible. The digging team continued to excavate for a further two hours, reaching a depth of approximately 50 meters. Good God, they were with no going. no unusual results observed, the team ceased their digging. The D-Class's camera and light continued operation for another 123 hours before running out of battery. I want to know what batteries that guy was using. Analysis of the final five hours of film has identified sounds consistent with muffled digging, slowly growing louder. Being buried alive, surrounded by dirt, is certainly a bad enough fate. Being buried alive repeatedly, with your only fate being dying underground over and over with no memory of what's going on, thanks to an extremely hateful tree, is on a whole other level. This is another one of those old school SCPs that is more akin to a creepypasta than an expansive canon with numerous characters. Uh huh. The SCP itself is pretty easy to contain just by keeping it in a box away from any sleeping people. Right. But the fact that this guy is now stuck in a never-ending loop of underground death is the truly horrific part. Yep. As usual, being a D-class in the Foundation has to really, really suck. <laughs> okay. So, I 150% see why you guys wanted me to see that now that is absolutely disturbing on so many levels <sighs> somebody took the fear of being buried alive and turned it into an endless hell and that poor d-class is going to be going through that for god knows how long guys this one was generally creepy um it's the one thing I really like about SCP videos. You don't... Like, the things that these people do... The wind up in these situations... Not much they can do about it. One of my favorite examples of it is the Horsemen. Because the Horsemen show up, showed up in Japan after the tsunami and in World War One, And then this, it was just like... Uh, we don't know what it's going to do. You got to do it or else, you know, you're a D-Class. Guess what happens? Guys, being a D-Class in the Foundation has got to suck. I mean, 100% got to suck. If you like this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I actually like the creepy pasta ones. 
the creepy pasta. I don't know. I'm an idiot. Um, I actually like those sometimes. I like the expanded universe, like the expanded canons, but I also like this. Guys, definitely, 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 if you have not seen the Exploring series, he's exploring 40k lore again, which is nice. I've seen some videos of his requested already. But aside from all that, oh, wow. check the links in the description. I'm going to have all the Exploring Series links in the description down below, right next to my own, including Merch by Valk, of which I'm wearing a little bit of with the hat. And my Discord, Patreon, everything like that. I will catch you guys next time. And guys, this week, do something for yourself. Don't get trapped underground. And I'll catch you guys next time. Just know. <laughs>